I'm Sophia Luisa Lee. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of So Zoom In. If you can, please hit like and subscribe. Robert Adanto, thank you so very much for joining me for an episode of So Zoom In, where we're going to be zooming in on you and what you're up to. You are an independent filmmaker slash documentarian, and you've combined two things I love most, film and art. And you really go for some gusto with what you do. And when I saw your latest project, Born Just Now, I knew I had to talk with you. So thank you so very much for joining me. Thank you for having me. And so Born Just Now, the life and art of Marta Yohavan, help me out here. Yohavanovich. Yohavanovich. Okay. Mm -hmm. First of all, she's a beautiful artist. I, you know, she I mean, is. She's absolutely gorgeous. Um, you did this, you started filming this in 2016? Correct. What inspired you to tackle on that kind of project? Well, it's almost like the third in kind of an exploration of feminist performance and feminist art. Um, the first being a 2010 film I made called Pearls on the Ocean Floor, which looked at Iranian female artists. And I shot that in 2009, the year of that, the green movement, the botched presidential election in Tehran and everyone taking to the streets. I was planning to go to Iran. I wasn't able to because they closed the door to all Americans when that happened. But I was able to still do my interviews. Um, and I had somebody who was in Iran that was able to shoot things for me when I because I wasn't going to be able to be there. Uh, that that film fe featured Shireen Nishat, Shadi Gadarian, several other top Iranian female artists. And I traveled to places in Europe to see many of the Iranian artists who could leave. And they met me in places like Frankfurt, Leipzig, Berlin, London and Paris. And um, I was really taken by not only their art, but given the situation, many of them lived in diasporas, but had family members still in Iran when all of this whole, I shot it in an entire year and finished the film in a year. So there was all of this stuff going on regarding Iran, but the women were like so open, honest, and what's the word? Just, there, there was kind of an, an intimacy, but there was also a need for them to speak. Right. And um, I come from a theater background. And so I was able to edit interviews focused on certain themes. And I kind of used this process that's kind of like a checkoff, the checkoff dinner scene. You know, almost every checkoff play has that dinner scene where people talk about, you know, what is Moscow going to be like in the future? And everybody pipes in. So I had these four different themes that were like, what was the impact of the Iranian revolution? What was the legacy of the Iran-Iraq war? What do you, where do you think Iran will be in 10 years? And I asked similar questions to all of these different artists and then juxtaposed their responses with one another and intercut with B-roll and them making their art as well as showing their artwork. Uh, I then, a few years later, made a film called The F Word, which looked at radical feminist performance in Bushwick, uh, an area of Brooklyn. And all the women there lived within a kind of like, I'd like to say like a two mile radius. It was in 2015. And the term uh, fourth wave was kind of a rogue term then. It was only being talked about by a couple of people. There were a lot of feminist writers that were saying, no, we're still in the third wave. These women that are saying they're fourth wave, it, 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 it's undefined, but some people had written about it and that intrigued me. And I met through a couple of friends, artist friends, some very interesting artists that I ended up making a film about and, um, one of the experts, uh, Dr. Kathy Batista, who had written, actually, she's written now two major works on feminist performance. Her first was about 
like London in the 60s and 70s. Then she did one on New York artists. I think it was published in 2018. Anyway, she's kind of an expert and I use her as a talking head within the film. She, uh, as I was finishing it up, she said, you know, I have an advanced copy of a catalog for an artist that I'm bringing to the United States for the first time. She's going to have her first solo show. She's a uh, Serbian from the former Yugoslavia. And I think maybe she should be in the F word. So she shared the catalog with me and I started looking at the art and it was really interesting. It intrigued me, but I knew right then and there that Marta did not belong in the F word because that was like American feminism. And she had such an interesting background. And I, I knew instantly after going through the book that I could make an entire film on her, given the fact that, you know, most Americans know nothing about the Balkans. They don't really know a whole lot other than they say, oh, yeah, they had that war, that civil war in the 90s. But they, and maybe they know Tito, but they don't know, you know, just the nuances and the complexities of who make who are the people that make up the former Yugoslavia? And um, I just, I, when I choose a topic, I always choose something that really interests me. And it's not just Marta, but that background. I love showing the historical context and how art, you know, and artists are speaking a language about the reality that they find themselves in. Right. And so. Mar uh, Kathy introduced me to Marta and I Skyped with Marta a couple of times and mm -hmm. found her intriguing. I love the way I love her voice and the way she spoke. And I just said, well, that she's very interesting and she could definitely be a subject of a film and hold our interests. So I, I'm curious because I'm, I'm all for women artists and you know, feminist, you know, feminist art. I, I embrace that. But for a man to step into that, to want to share that, to create a, you know, a message to share, I, I'm not too used to that. Um, what, what piqued your curiosity to go in that direction? You know, I've been asked this in other interviews yeah. and Hey, I'm all for it. You know, hey. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's it's nothing. I I it's it it is a it's an important question. And I've always, you know, I've thought about it, but I've I've seen in my own life, not specifically artists, although I do have that background, I've just seen up close men mistreat women in a way where and for years where I knew someone that was like living in fear and living a life that wasn't completely full the way they might have wanted it to be. And I just had a deep um, connection to that and, and, feel for that. And in some ways, I champion the women that I see in the arts and the ones that I've been able to meet, I just find them heroic. And I think that there's great, I, there's a great story there. Like, if you can provide enough context to show the obstacles that they're up against, so that you see their creative act as something heroic. It's, um, it's not just defiance, but it's like speech. I am communicating like, and that's a gift that we all have, but not everybody is capable of expressing themselves as effectively as they do, as beautifully as they do. And so I, 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 I love exploring that and giving voice to it with my own films. Well, I'm glad that you do. And I mean, I'm really glad that you picked you picked her, Marta. You, I'm gonna say her name wrong again, so please help me. Jovanovic. Jovanovic. Yes. I'm gonna get this right, Jovanovic. Yes. So one, I, I saw the movie, the, docu the documentary, so thank you so much for sharing that with me. Um, 
very powerful stuff. And I know you made this pre-pandemic, um, and so you were able to travel back and forth a few times, right? And yes. Really be able to be in that presence and experience that vulnerability of the art. I mean, performance art, I feel you really expose yourself. You have to have a lot of courage. You know, you really expose your soul to get across your truth. And that's what I love about performance art is because it, it's all, you can't really lie when you're doing performance art. I mean, you, I, I just don't think you can, um, yeah. not to be true performance art. Um, but I really feel even though this was done before the pandemic, everything felt so timely as of now. It had that timelessness feel to it. You know, the, those feelings of, you know, having certain ex expectations and how do you break those expectations? How do, how, how do you find who you are? How do you find what your purpose is? And each step you take us through, it's, it's like peeling back a layer of the onion that was very engaging. And, and there are moments I have to admit, I felt uncomfortable and I'm thinking, why am I feeling uncomfortable? What, you know, what is she reflecting to me? And that was, that's the purpose I feel anyway, of what performance art is mm -hmm. to really connect with the audience. And you captured it so beautifully. You put this narrative together that, you know, you, you capture like the political part and the cultural part and, and who she was as an individual, you know, just really reaching for these truths. And I, I just want to say, it's like, I want all people to be doing that, you know, really reach for what their truth is now, you know, who, who are we? And so I, when I saw that, I'm like, yes, because this is what people need to start. I, okay. I don't mean a lecture, but um, this is what people I feel need to know. It's okay to speak your truth, you know, to be your authentic self. So I, I love that about the film. Oh, thank you. No, anyway, so um, I, I, um, sorry, I just, no, yeah, no, I, I just thought it was so cool. Um, so, but if you were to do, a, if you were to do another, I mean, obviously you couldn't do something like you did with that now, or could you, could you do something like that during this pandemic time? What would that be like? You mean without being in contact or through Zoom or? Because I, I love that you're just really reaching to share these stories that I feel are so universal for people, but because of this lockdown, because of all these different things happening that kind of restrict us, that kind of, in a way, bind us, which I love how you have that whole performance art about the binding in the film. Too. Yeah. Um, yeah, how, how do you as a filmmaker continue going on? I mean, even when you have this film, you know, um, previewed or shown, what kind of obstacles are you dealing with? Yeah, um, well, I'm gonna answer your initial question second. Okay. This year has been, as everyone knows, pretty crazy. Um, and there have been silver linings in there because like it's won seven festivals in 2020. And one was actually 2019 in Argentina. That was the that was the first one. And then it won seven other film film festivals throughout the year, all in COVID, and they were all online. Um, there are a couple that want to bring me out once this is truly gone and they could start doing some screenings in person. The, the Venice Festival that I'm going to be in, Venice, California Festival, the other Venice Film Festival is what it's called. Uh, that'll be one of the, well, I've had, a, I had a couple pre-COVID in-person screenings, but not many. So I'm really happy about being able to share it again with an audience. Um, one thing, I mean, that makes this film special, and even though those, I, I really love the F word and Pearls on the Ocean Floor, great moment of filmmaking. You know, the whole thing is I went to Belgrade for the first time in February of 2016 got some great footage. I knew I was gonna go back a few months later. I just wanted to be able to cut something, 
to show some people to get more financing. Cause I had one person on board, but I knew if I just go in and get that motherhood performance, do some interviews, I could cut something that I could show. And then, I, you know, I was living in Miami at the time and I used to talk to Marta every now and then. And then she hadn't told me the first time when I was in Belgrade that she had separated from her husband. And at some point she told me that there, it had become violent and that he was doing things, stealing her mail, all kinds of just crap. And he doesn't really live in Yugoslavia, he's Italian and he lives in Italy, but he was coming into Serbia and doing kind of different things. And I knew I had to get back immediately to capture that because that was gonna take the film in another direction that, you know, no matter what I planned, I didn't know about that. And I just said, wow, if I could get that kind of um, that, that moment in her life, it'll just make everything else more complete, more full. And uh, so that's a unique film, like whether or not there was the pandemic, like, I don't know, even if there wasn't a pandemic, I, I was very fortunate to catch and document that part of her life, you know, and she was going through a whole lot. And all those performances came about as responses to that. For, for example, what led to their fallout? Mm -hmm. she, had al she had always said, my art is my babies. I do not want to have children. And mm -hmm. the man who married her, I think in his mind, he thought, well, no, she'll eventually have kids. Mm -hmm. And when she put her foot down and said, I said, I'd never do that. He was upset and it just got really messy. The motherhood performance, the eggs hanging, there's one for each time she ovulated and decided not to have a kid. And so that's why that piece is called motherhood. And you notice she says, that hammer is my art. So that really just resonated with me and yeah. it's just like a whole nother level. But in terms of, uh, I have shot some things, not any specific person, but I, I'm working on, on, and I have been, even when I was finishing Born Just Now, I've been working on an animated nonfiction piece that that's going to be the next thing. I shot some other things. I moved from Miami during this process back to New York where I had lived before and shot some artists before the pandemic. And I have some footage that I still need to kind of like put together. There's something there with a couple of them that I would like to go back and see what's, you know, what the potential is. So but yeah, it's been a crazy year <laughs> just because I haven't been able to like travel with the film and do those kind of things. So Right. Like, that's part of the fun of it. You know, um, doing yeah. all the different things and me, all the different people. But okay, so when you were putting your documentary together, did you have an idea of how you wanted to piece it together or did you just want to get a lot of footage and then just kind of like piece it together? After um, that? I did. I well, you know, as I said, like I shot, I, I shot her in Belgrade three different times and in New York twice. And we went to Paris and the, some of the New York stuff happened after that first trip to Belgrade. And I got into the Sundance lab in Miami for the, they have a rough cut lab, you know, where they want to see a certain amount of footage. And I got a call and they said, you know, we're interested, but will, can you assemble? Cause I, I submitted 20 minutes, like a, a 20 minute clip of a bunch of different scenes. And they said, could you put together 40 minutes? Cause it's required that you show 40 and then we'll critique. And it doesn't have to be 
moment to moment. It could be sections, but we'd like to see 40 minutes. And I had, I had a lot of footage, so I put something together and I ended up getting in the lab and that was a great experience. I'm glad that I did that and I got some great feedback, but what happened out of like posting some, you know, some images from the lab and things, I got a call from Anthony Zyker and Anthony Zyker is the creator of CSI, the guy they're back after 25 years. He's the, the guy that dreamt that up. That's his baby. Wow. And he said, I'd love to see, uh, I heard some good things about what you showed in Miami. I'd love to see it. Can you send me the link? And maybe we can talk next week. Well, I sent him the link. And about an hour later, he called back and he said, so what do you need? Wow. What do you need? And I go, well, I explained the whole situation with Marta. Hmm. And well, I, I want to come on board as executive producer. And he funded the rest of the thing. Like I, I went, I literally like four days later left to Belgrade for like 35 days and just shot and shot and shot and got everything that I needed that I hadn't been able to get. Wow. And from there, then I, you know, I knew I had all the footage to complete the, the feature film. And I just, I was editing while I was there and trying to save some money because I had, I, I found somebody who could not only translate the Serbian, but was also editing. So we were doing like rough edits. She was adding text as we were going, like, what are they saying here? Like she was able to just, because I remember I was speaking through an interpreter through some of it. And uh, yeah, I just, wow. it's, That's so it, it, all, it all just worked out. It was like, I was very fortunate, but I always say like, you got to start, mm -hmm. know your subject because inevitably, especially in a place like LA or New York, you're going to meet someone that if you can be articulate about what your film is about and what you want to do with it, you may be able to persuade them to help or to come along or to join you. And right. so, yeah, it's always important to be able to, to give well, voice to what the project can or will be. Well, exactly. Well, what you've put together, it flows so beautifully. I mean, it's, it's seamless and you're, you're really getting an in-depth view of who this woman is and just all that she income everything that she embodies which is really nice to see because like i said before it really pulls you in um so you're going to be showing this film october 2nd right Was yeah it at the other venice film festival does this film have distribution or is this something that you are still looking to get i i am still looking to get that okay oh so. This is a wonderful, wonderful film. So I, I, I'm sure you'll have no problem getting it just the right Thanks. person. Because, um, and I, I love that you were able to get that guy to be an executive producer. That yeah, uh, yeah, great opportunity. So, um, is he willing to finance your next project? He has, you know, I. I it's been about because he started work. Like he, he's also producing an upcoming Broadway show that was supposed to be supposed to have started like in Connecticut by now, but because of COVID that happened, but he's always working on something. And then he, of course, CSI is back and he's executive producer of that. He has seen the first 10 pages of a script from about two years ago and he's intrigued. So like, yeah, I could always have a conversation about that. I do have a producer on board who I met in Belgrade, who's from Hamburg. So that's mm -hmm. the beginning. And he's also a great filmmaker. So I'm looking forward to finishing that or getting, getting everything going on that soon. Right, so would you say your series of um, women artists is gonna take a little break or will you continue that if the right person came along? Yeah, if the right person came along, definitely. Because here, here's one of the things. Anthony connected me to the head of documentary. He's, he's represented by CAA. Mm. 
as a writer producer. And, you know, this was his first documentary that he produced, but we got in touch with an agent there and she loved the film. I mean, her response to it was very much like yours. And we submitted to all the big festivals and, you know, I was a Sundance fellow and I had done that lab. So I thought, well, maybe I got a good chance of getting in that year. And that was, tw that was 2018. That was the year of the RBG documentary. There was also, I think, a Jane Fonda documentary. There were a lot of documentaries about iconic women mm -hmm. in the arts, in politics. And, you know, my film came along and the feedback she was getting from people from Sundance, people from the Berlin Film Festival, people from Toronto is that it's really interesting but we can't market that because she's not a big enough artist. She's not a big enough name. It's easy to sell RBG. It's easy to sell Jane Fonda because everyone knows who that is. The other big, there was the Grace Jones documentary that, that year. And so that was the feedback. She's like, I know it's a tough one because that's what they're telling me. And so that kind of stopped that momentum. Like I, I, I didn't get into Sundance and I didn't get into Berlin, but I got into some other like mid range festivals and it's done well. And then COVID hit, but the response has been really good. And maybe they saw in the film, what you did in terms of seeing it through the lens of the pandemic and lockdown. You know, I think there's, I think there's also something about the film. Yes, I want to be in a theater showing it on a big screen, but there's kind of an intimacy within the film that maybe it does play better on a small screen. Well, I, I really enjoyed it watching on my laptop. And I, I'm mm -hmm. sure what, I mean, especially some of those performance pieces, you know, like with the eggs and, yeah. and um, even like the burning of the dress, that was like really cool. Um, but I mean, <laughs> there, there are a lot of, some, there were some moments that would have looked great, but still, I guess because she had such a vulnerability to her and such yeah. authenticity that really connected. Um, and I, I'm sure there's so many women who can really relate to that. Um, and it's just like that, that those private moments from like person to person, if that makes sense, that mm -hmm. can really, I think be enjoyed more. I, Close rather up. Than, yeah, rather than having, you know, being in an audience with a lot of women, which is fine too, because I mean, um, you know, like I think of different performance artists, they have an audience and they're, you know, so focused in on what they're doing. It doesn't matter who's around. So, I mean, that's fine too. Um, True. It makes me think with her, you know, her work because of the pandemic, I wonder how that's affected her now. And I, is she going to be with you on Saturday or, or October? No, un unfortunately she's, uh, she's actually in Italy right now. All right. So um, see that those would be really interesting questions. I think to find out, you know, what has it been like for you as a performance artist and even with a school, you know, in inspiring others to be performance artists, you know, what has the pandemic done, you know, for you with that? Yeah. Really interesting. Um, it, it's well. I heard a rumor that there's going to be a writer's strike. You know, um, so if that's the case, then you know, it might give your documentary a lot more opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so you know, I'm this year. This is the year of crazy. How long, how long have you heard of that strike happening? I just heard of it as of yesterday. Oh um, wow. Apparently they're going to vote on it. Apparently one of the big things is because of all the different streaming platforms, you know, writers are being abused. You know, they're not being paid enough and they're being expected to work longer hours and, mm. and more hours. And so it'll, it'll be interesting to see what happens, especially when you have something like the Emmys and so many shows like on Apple TV or, you know, Netflix or you know, whatever these different platforms are winning awards. And the, the writers yeah. acknowledge as such. You know, so I, I just think that's interesting. So if that were to happen, because I think back to 2007 during the writer's strike when everything just- Yeah, that was- Yeah. So hopefully, you know, but this is definitely the year of shifting, right? 
Yes. <laughs> yeah. And, and that might just be starting, you know, like uh, in a way. So um, I'm glad you have a project going on right now, you know, so that you can still keep working on it and not be, you know, stuck in the lurch, I guess, but you know, just be that continual flow of creation, which is kind of cool. Um, <laughs> it's just I mean there's just so much happening and I I think when people tune into people's stories there's that connection and I think we've been isolated because of the pandemic and we're not having the gallery openings or you know the well, things that we used to have um but when you have a film like yours it's like an opportunity to really connect with someone on a different level if that makes sense yeah that's for sure I there are art openings now though it's not like, the same what it was. Yeah, no, no, I know. But I, I went to three art openings on oh, this past Saturday here. Oh, good. Okay, so I just um The things are kind of coming back. And I, I took my camera. I was in Berlin for like three and a half weeks mm -hmm. from in July and August. Or like there was a window and I said, now I can travel. I haven't flown anywhere since 2019. And I, I went and I didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't even shoot anything. I just, cause their museums were open. I just wanted to go walk in that city, which I love. It was like the fourth time I've been there. And I just, I was going to like two, three museums a day, just kind of like, taking it all in. So I, I am ready, like, creatively, but I think there was definitely a period in the pandemic where I just wanted to kind of close down in a good way and just do a routine of like walking early in the morning and doing certain like things out of routine just to keep myself kind of like balanced. Right. You know, like I didn't want to, I didn't want to start drinking and, you know, like there was all this stuff about like what people were doing and mm -hmm. I just wanted to keep my immune system strong and, and right. do all the right things. So it was a good time to kind of just take stock. And, and it was, it was great in another way. Like I, I like I said, I was winning these festivals and appearing and doing great Q and A's and stuff like I won at the art of Brooklyn film festival last year. And, um, what's Anna, here's a name that I can't say. Shiora, you know, like, you know, she was in do the right thing. She at one point was on, she was on uh, law and order for a couple of years, but you know, you know who she is. I call you. Recognize Anna, is it Annabelle or Anna Siora, like S-C-I-O-R-R-A? She's really famous. Yeah. She's an Italian-American okay. actress. Uh, so? No, but she, <laughs> she gave me the, war, the, award, the virtual award. Oh, she okay. was part of the Q&A and stuff. And she really liked the film. So awesome. that was really nice. Oh, that's right. All right. So the film, how can people get tickets to it? Uh, through the other Venice Film Festival website, there's okay. there are links there. Okay. Uh, again, the film is playing Saturday, October 2nd. It's screening once at 4 p.m. on that day. And there are tickets. I believe they're $15. Okay. And it's a good, it's a, it's a smaller theater, but it's really nice. Cool. And the opening night is that Friday. So it's the day before is October 1st. That's the, uh, there's an opening film and a band and a party and stuff. And then there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of great shorts and other documentaries, other features playing throughout that festival. Oh, well, that's great. Sorry. Right. So how, how many days is the festival? It's, it's a short one. It's only Monday through or Friday through Sunday. Okay. That is short. So when will you know if you win? you gotta probably win sunday yeah. night like they probably have the awards or something sunday night okay because you have a real winner i mean it's a it's a beautiful beautiful film you know so Thank you. 
you know, so I would love for people to go out and see it. And so, and like I said, there are other films going on. If people want to see more than one, make a day out of it. Oh yeah. Yeah. They, and they have a, they have a package. I, I'm not sure what that costs. It's, it's pretty affordable. Okay. Now, will you be doing a question or Q and A afterwards? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Do you know who, will you be doing that with anyone or do you not know that yet? Or uh, I don't, it might just be me fielding questions from the audience. I don't know. I haven't been told that there's um, someone going to join me in conversation. Not sure. Um, when, so when you did the documentary, were you also, did you also film it? Yourself? I mean, did you have the camera filming on yourself or were you? Did you no, have no, no. I, I worked with a great Serbian cinematographer, Lazar Bogdanovic. Yeah. Um, he shot everything that was in Belgrade and in Paris and then I also worked with Daniel Cole, who is a New York base. He shot all of the work in New York. And um, so I, I, but Lazar did the bulk of the, of the shooting. Has Marta seen it? She has, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. So what, what, what was her feedback on it? What she, she loved it. I mean, she's, she knows like, she's moved on from being that person in that moment, right. but she's happy that it got captured. Cause that's one thing that most performance artists, that's their one thing that they worry about because like you said, you know, they perform, they're in the moment, but what happens after, like, what is the legacy? Right. And most of the time things are like documented but it's like a simple camera. Here's the performance. Here's where it was. You could see the audience, but you don't get like up close. It's just, it's usually not very artistic or beautifully shot. It's just kind of like fly on the wall. There's the performance. There's, and she liked the fact that it was, uh, intimate and she didn't mind that performances were edited and cut down she was happy that i got the essence of each of those major performances All right so one one of the things i liked about watching on a film one for perform, performances it was when um she was on the chair with a guy in the um nazi uniform and yeah. you showed expressions of the audience members and it was so fascinating to watch how people were watching it, you know? Yeah. And, well, that, and that's something you don't get a chance to see, so. No, and there's, well, here's the thing. There's definitely a culture there of people and performance in ways that even in New York, you don't get that kind of involvement. Like people watch, but I feel like, and I've seen a lot of performance in New York, it's, they're more distant. They're more kind of clinical or surgical in how they're going to view the work. Whereas you, if you see those people in, in Belgrade watching, like they're so present, like this is performance, you know, like there's a just, another level that they bring to the performance, you know? And you also see like, you know, in um, the beauty of tight bindings, the final performance, you see men that come in suits and stuff. Like it's a different vibe. It's not like, you know, it's performance. You go to LA and they're like people like, just like they were, you know, at a fireworks display or whatever. Like people take it a little more, seriously there well it was great to watch it's, i was really glad to have that experience and i i think people will really enjoy seeing that just to yeah thank you <laughs> it's, something, it's something you wouldn't see otherwise you know so i i appreciate it. i appreciate that all right so again it's at the other venice film festival in venice right yes october 2nd which i believe is a saturday yes at 4 p.m you can at get to the line right 4 PM? You can get tickets online at the other Venice Film Festival website. It's at Beyond Baroque on Venice Boulevard, on North Venice Boulevard. I believe the address is 681 
North Venice Boulevard. It's a really famous place where a lot of beat poets used to read. They still do readings there. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. All right. And if someone wants to reach out to you, what's the best way for them to get on? Uh, Instagram. It's okay. Robert dot adanto a d a n t o okay great and, and you will be there on october 2nd you're oh definitely yeah i'll be there I'll, I'll be there all three days i'm going to the opening festival and then i'll be there most of saturday and sunday okay well it sounds great well i, I hope to make it because i would love to see you on the big screen you know and it'd be yeah, great please to come so definitely. All right. Well, Robert, thank you so very much for your time. Is, is there anything else you'd like to throw out there before? Uh, no, I'm, I'm, thank you for having me. I, I think I've said enough about the film. I, I hope people can make it out to Venice, not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, October 2nd. Well, it'd be great just you know, to start seeing people again, you know, go out yeah. there or, you know, be part of this, this creative energy. You know, we need to get that going again. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. All right. Well, thank you so very much, Robert. I greatly appreciate it. Thank I, you. I hope to see you October 2nd. Yeah. And uh, someday in person. Well, maybe well, then. October 2nd. Yeah. yeah <laughs> right. There Thanks we go. So Take right, care. Bye-bye.